Hello, my name is Eric Carpenter and I'm an education designer with the University of Colorado Boulder's Science Discovery Program. This video is intended to help teachers make the materials needed for the Earth System Science Exploring Change in the Critical Zone program. Today we'll be making sedimentary layers for the Foundations for Flow module. The materials for the module are fun and easy to make. So easy, in fact, students can make them. They're made primarily from sand, clay, and plaster in a variety of ratios using different food colorings. Some of the layers represent thick sedimentary layers common throughout Colorado and the Rocky Mountain West. Others simulate shales, sandstones, and a variety of other sedimentary rocks, with the only variation being the ratios of sand to plaster and the occasional addition of gravel. Each one of our rock layers has some interesting and unique features, and we use them differently in the module. We use the different materials for a variety of different purposes. The thicker sandstone layers we use on sloped mountain models to help students understand the process of erosion caused by glaciers. The soft nature of the material, particularly when water is added, allows students to carve glacial features into the landscape and model how their mountain features were created. Other examples, like the shale, are highly susceptible to erosion and practically melt when water is added. When stacked, these materials make a great addition to any stream table activity by allowing students to simulate valley formation and stream cutting. In today's video, students from a local elementary school will be joining us to help make sedimentary layers for the Foundations for Flow module. Recipes, instructions, and tips and tricks can be found in the curriculum guide available at the Science Discovery website. My name is Zach. And I'm Tyler. And I am Oliver. And I am Carl. We are students at the Watershed School in Boulder, Colorado. And today we are making sedimentary layers for the Foundation Flow Module. Hi. Today we are going to make Entrada Sandstones. So, the first step is to put in 1,000 milliliters of sand. Then we'll put in 75 milliliters of plaster. And then 125 milliliters of water. And about 30 drops of yellow food dye. The next fun step is to mix it all together. We will be using our hands. The last fun step is to place the mixture onto the tray, pack, and let dry. It turns out that this is almost the exact recipe for sandstone. Due to the fact that we make plaster out of ca calcium carbonate, the same thing that makes limestone, which holds the, which holds the particles of sand together. Thus equaling, we are making actual sandstone. Today we will begin by making fountain formation sandstones. To start, you put in 1,000 milliliters of sand. It can be at just play sand, or sand box, or whatever. <coughs> Probably pretty easily found. It's probably cheap too, if you need to get some. Next, we'll put in 80 milliliters of plaster. But for this example, it's already done. <laughs> and then, 125 milliliters of water. Finally, to finish this mixture off, put in about 40 drops. The next step is to stir the mixture together. And to, for this, you can use a spoon or your own hand if you want to get messy. The next step is to pack the Make sure into a tray or cookie sheet, which you know to make easy to get. <laughs> the last step is, um, after it's all packed down, is just to let it dry. Today we'll be making lichens, 
deformation shales. The first step is to dissolve 100 milliliters of light colored natural clay in 250 milliliters of water. Apparently, it's best to throw them in at the same time. <laughs> until it has a thick consistency similar to chocolate milk. The next step is to pour 750 milliliters of sand into the bowl. And then after that you add about 40 drops of red food coloring. And lastly, don't compress the mixture into a chart. Science Explorers and the Earth System Science Exploring Change in the Critical Zone program are brought to you by a collaboration among the University of Colorado Boulder's Science Discovery Program, the University of Colorado Boulder's Institute for Arctic and Alpine Research, the Boulder Creek Critical Zone Observatory Program, and the National Science Foundation.